Hello, I'm Yasser Janab, interventional cardiologist from Tehran Heart Center, presenting the coronary subclavian steel syndrome a snuff box approach. Our case is a 59 year old man with history of coronary artery bypass about seven months ago uh, with Lima on lady and one softness vein graft. He has no coronary risk factor. He's presenting with exertion chest pain function class one and he has left arm claudication after coronary artery bypass graft. On physical examination, he had absent left hand pulses. He had CT angiography of aortic arch and its branches, which showed occlusion of left subclavian artery after a few millimeters from its origin. Just before left vertebral artery with some calcification, you can see the length of our occlusion. The patient was candidate for coronary angiography. We had one access from right femoral artery and six French sheet and another axis six French sheet on left snuff box under Doppler ultrasound had no pulses it was only done by the aid of ultrasound coronary angiography showed patent left main significant stenosis of LAD and LCX and as you can see the left internal mammary artery is filled retrogradely from LAD it's not filling LAD but it is filled by LAD and as we had two axes from right femoral artery and left uh, distal radial artery, we could uh, do double injection from epictal in aortic arch and left subclavian artery, which can vividly show the occlusion of left subclavian artery. You can see the occlusion, the length of the occlusion. You can see that we have a small sub patent subclavian artery at the starting point, then it's occluded before left vertebral artery. Coronary subclavian steel syndrome has two parts clavian artery occlusion or significant stenosis, and coronary artery bypass graft using the internal mammary arterial EMA. Flow through the EMA may reverse and still flow from the coronary circulation during upper extremity exercise as this patient was complaining of claudication of left arm and exertional chest pain. It has been reported that endovascular intervention is safe with low morbidity and mortality in coronary subclavian steel syndrome. Wiring of left subclavian artery occlusion was first done from right femoral artery. We had a long 6 French sheet A1 catheter O35 hydrophilic guide wire. You can see our sheet. A1 catheter or hydrophilic guide wire which was unsuccessful. We couldn't re-enter to the trulumen. After that we used our left snuff box access. We had a six French sheet A1 catheter and long O35 hydrophilic guide wire which was easily passed from distal part of occlusion into proximal part of subclavian artery and into aortic arch. After that, we snared our wire from our right femoral artery axis sheet. Now we have a wire from our right femoral artery axis through the lesion and extracted from the left snuff box. So we did prodilation with 4 mm balloon. You can see the prodilation of the lesion. You can see there is tight lesion in left vertebral artery at the origin which was also shown in our CT angiogram. Uh, we did predilation of this lesion with 3 mm NC coronary balloon. We wired it O14 wire and you can see the 3 mm balloon in the vertebral artery and you can see the left vertebral artery after ballooning. We put a stent just before left internal mammary artery and covering uh, left vertebral artery down to aortic arch 2 mm in aorta and you can see the result our stent was balloon expandable stent 7 mm diameter and 59 lens we did post dilation with 8 mm balloon we can see uh, the final result in summary in patients with history of coronary artery bypass graft chest pain and arm claudication might be due to coronary subclavian steel syndrome and angioplasty and stenting of the left subclavian artery is a good option for the treatment of coronary subclavian steel syndrome. Thanks for your attention.